Hi everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and these are your sun and rising sign horoscopes for the month of November 2021. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Um, I can't believe that 2021 is almost, uh, almost over, but it's not going out quietly. We have a Jupiter-Pluto conjunction this month. We have a, a bunch of uh, hard aspects from Libra to Capricorn and eclipses starting in this month. So uh, yeah, 2020 is not going out quietly. All right, let's, uh, but let's dive in. If you're a Cancer rising, what I want to highlight are two transits that are taking place over the course of the month. And I'll give you the dates and kind of the general feeling. Um, Mercury at the beginning of the month for the first seven days in retrograde, stationing, turning direct and going back forward will square Saturn in Capricorn twice between your fourth and seventh houses. Um, then Venus uh, in Libra later in the month uh, around the ninth will uh, oppose Mars retrograde in Aries in your 10th house. And then Venus in Libra between the 15th and the 19th will square Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn across the fourth and seventh house axis. If you're a Cancer rising, if you are any cardinal sign rising, or uh, if you're going by sun sign, then these, these are the biggest transits of the month because they're falling in what are called the angular houses. The angular houses are the places of power in astrology. These are the places that, um, you know, these are the places that are kind of like the, um, the most dynamic and active month by month when transits come through these places. These are usually the ones that you'll notice a lot more than, than your average transit. Uh, so let's discuss what areas of life these, um, these transits are, are pointing towards this month if you're Cancer rising and kind of what to expect. So fourth house is where the, the, the central theme of the month is really peace, harmony, love, beauty, pleasantness, agreement, um, and, and kind of good fortune around the topic of home, family, property, um, family relationships, your home life, your private sphere of life, the kind of the place that you find your roots. It could have some ancestral or family karma connections uh, going on this month for you. But the, the thing that's pronounced is that Venus wants peace and harmony and um, safety and health even around home, family, property, roots, land, living environment, and so forth. Now, along with Mercury in, the, in Venus's sign in the same house, wants the same thing. Uh, we are running into some conflicts between Mars, who is retrograde and eventually turning direct by the 14th in the career house. So there's going to be some competing um, energy demanding your attention, time, energy, etc. cetera, um, from the 10th house of career vocation. So the demands that are being placed on you right now from that area of life are probably pretty intense. And then we also have energy uh, in Capricorn in the seventh house of marriage, relationships, sexuality, interpersonal dynamics. Um, and so maintaining the peace is the central theme this month, especially around home, family, and roots with um, the potential for a, a kind of heightened conflict uh, between on the first when Mercury squares Saturn in the seventh, um, on the ninth when Venus opposes Mars in the tenth. Uh, and then between the 15th and the 19th, when Venus squares Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. So that's like the, that's one of the big stories of the month. And again, with Venus being in the superior position in the process of overcoming Mars and the process of overcoming the stellium and Capricorn, um, with Mercury in the superior position overcoming Saturn, um, it really is about trying to maintain harmony and peace, even if there are some heavier things going on in the house of relationships uh, with a spouse or partner, something going on in their life or in your relate in a relationship itself, or, uh, or there's weightier decisions you're having to make about relationships or um, more challenging dynamics happening in the workplace. Keep the peace, keep the peace, keep the peace. That's, that's Venus's motto this month. And so don't, don't stress too much and be willing to compromise in order to keep a grounded, sort of steady feeling of um, harmony and happiness at the roots. That's a big story for the month. That's the, the big story for the month if you are uh, a Cancer. Now, you're also going to see that there is a, a pretty gigantic catharsis happening in the house of marriage. Um, by the 12th of the month, um, you're going to see 
Jupiter and Pluto conjoin in the seventh house of marriage and relationships, whether that means something is changing in the life of a spouse or partner, you're meeting someone, a relationship is ending, there is transformational kind of quintessential, um, you know, death and rebirth energy in the house of relationships this month. Watch for that to be um, really heightened around the 12th. Now, uh, if we go forward to the 14th, we're going to have a new moon in um, Scorpio in your fifth house. And that new moon in Scorpio um, plants a seed of development and change that will start growing in a place that is related to pleasure, happiness, children, pregnancy, creativity, and you could even say the arts in a general sense. This was traditionally called the, the house that was called the joy of Venus. Um, so watch for those themes to be important, but watch for there also to be potential for some uh, discordance between the topic of joy, pleasure, children, etc., and the dispositor Mars, who is just stationing and turning direct um, by the 14th um, in Aries. So there's some turn. There's a there's a turn that's happening. For a lot of, for example, a lot of, I could see a lot of people dealing with issues related to children and work simultaneously right around the middle of the month. On the other hand, um, the question about joy, pleasure, the need for personal happiness, and then feeling obligated or bound to, um, you know, the demands of Mars in the career house could also be a theme over the next lunar cycle. And also just questions about joy, pleasure, and happiness that will be front and center and making sure you're taking care of yourself. We all need to have a little joy in our lives. And the Scorpio new moon in the fifth is kind of an, um, an intense signature saying, hey, look, are you, are you finding enough happiness? You know, is there enough joy? Um, really important to um, pay attention to that this month. On the 27th, Venus in Scorpio will oppose Uranus in Taurus. And uh, that really brings back the same basic question about pleasure, happiness. It starts to also suggest that if you're not tending to those things, you might be starting to feel rebellious and you could end up doing something that's a little bit reckless. At the same time, if you've been pent up and waiting for some form of release, um, you'll probably notice it coming in towards the very end of the month. One thing you do have to be careful of is the very last day of the month, November 30th, you have a lunar eclipse in your 12th house. A lunar eclipse in the 12th house can mean a lot of different things. It can mean some challenges around family karma. It can mean challenges around uh, your health, mental, emotional, or physical. It can mean the need for deeper reflection, solitude, or distancing yourself from the world. Um, it could speak to suddenly finding yourself in some kind of limbo space or no man's land, or almost like you're having to go back to something from the past and you're stuck dealing with it again. On the other hand, um, this, this energy of the eclipsing moon in the 12th house can bring old demons uh, to the surface and kind of purge and expel them. So it, it can be a good transit, a lunar eclipse in the 12th in terms of just letting deeper, darker, heavier themes kind of come to the surface and being like, okay, I'm ready to let them go. So I think that there's a positive theme there uh, potentially that could it may be a little difficult to deal with, but some healing available. So uh, watch for that right around the 30th of the month, but that'll stretch out over the next couple of months to into December and January as eclipses take a while to sort of fully manifest their effects. All right, so let's wind it back. We're going to do it again. We're going to put Scorpio on the ascendant this time. All right, so if you are a Scorpio rising, Scorpio sun sign, uh, let's break up the same dynamics uh, that we started with and let's take a look at how they apply to your chart. So this month, you've got Venus and Mercury in superior position to a whole stellium of planets in Jupiter, uh, in Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn in Capricorn. And then you also have Venus in a... Um, in an opposition with Mars this month, Mars retrograde, who is also turning direct by the middle of the month. Mercury retrograde, the very beginning of the month, is square to Saturn and will station, turn direct, and go back through the square to Saturn. Um, Venus and Mercury are in the overcoming or superior position to the whole stellium in Capricorn. What does that mean? Excuse me. Um, what does that mean? Well, you have to look at the house dynamics, first of all. We're talking about the 12th house, the 6th house, and the third house, all of which are cadent houses. You've probably heard me say this before, but these houses were called metacosmios, which means that they are like they're like um, worlds in between worlds. 
And it is it would be very normal if you are a Scorpio rising this month for there to be um, some, uh, what, do, what do we want to say? That you're, you're dealing with things from the past. That often happens um, where you are reflecting upon lessons learned or starting to deal with or make a transition after something that has happened in the past or that has recently taken place. And being in those liminal spaces is not easy. Um, the thing to remember right now is that um, Venus and Mercury in the 12th on the positive side are looking to create a peaceful transition, a peaceful transformation, a peaceful level of acceptance for the changes that are taking place. On the other hand, the dark element potentially of Venus and Mercury in the 12th house is trying to please too many people, getting caught in the middle of something, or potentially um, letting some degree of, let's just say, interpersonal drama or conflict, which could include, include gossip and manipulation and certain elements of betrayal even, um, overwhelm you. So you don't, you don't want to let like your life turn into a soap opera this month. And it could with Venus and Mercury and Libra uh, in the 12th house. But also, this is a time to soften your own mental rigidities this month and to let go of things where you may be too, your principles are important, but if they're too rigid, uh, that could be problematic. So compromise is a really important theme for you this month in order to make a healthy transition or in order to start letting go of something. These houses are hard to describe and it's hard to make them really, really tangible and concrete because they tend to be more mental. They tend to be about mental and emotional turbulence and transition and change and your mindset. Um, so there's changes happening there this month. I would say to be extra careful when Venus opposes Mars on the ninth for conflicts to come up where you either are unwilling to compromise and that gets you into trouble or you're too willing to compromise and that gets you into trouble. So you want to, you know, be very careful uh, with how you are dealing with or handling conflicts right around the um, ninth of the month. Now, these energies will also appear between um, the 15th and the 19th as Venus squares Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. Um, so watch for all of these themes to really be present through about the 20th of the month. Um, now, if we go forward to November 12th, uh, there is something of a catharsis waiting for you this month mentally. We're seeing that because the third house, which is related to the mind, uh, we're, we're seeing Jupiter conjoined Pluto in that house. That can mean that there is this, this very deep level of um, catharsis or change that happens. And it, it has a way of transforming the way you think or communicate. It can also impact relationships uh, with siblings or people who are close to you or surrounding your family. Um, it can also have something to do with your neighborhood or more immediate environment or sphere of activities. And of course, the Pluto-Jupiter transit often emphasizes, especially right now because Jupiter is about to move forward and change signs, some final catharsis, some final um, revelation or upheaval that has been cooking for a while. Um, maybe more of a mental breakthrough than anything else, but watch for this to also manifest in your immediate environment and just, you know, it kind of it's almost like notice where the, the pressure or the fault lines are in your life right now, in your everyday kind of day-to-day -day routines, because something is probably going to reveal itself and uh, demand for some kind of change. Uh, and that would, you'll really notice it the first half of the month. But um, we're talking about something that's also coming in under the dark moon, which means that there's sometimes a very deep level of releasing that will happen. All right. If you go to the 14th, you're going to get the new moon in your home sign in first house this month uh, if you're a Scorpio, which means that personal change and transformation is uh, the, the, the focus for the next lunar cycle ahead, which takes you almost towards the end of the year. So um, when you get a first house new moon, the emphasis is usually on some very personal level of change or outlook that needs to happen. And sometimes it could also be physical, some need to address your health or your body or your well being. Um, so watch for a more a, a theme of per, the need to make some kind of important personal shift or change to start establishing itself right around the 14th, at the same time that your ruling planet Mars turns direct in the sixth house, where 
it's maybe been laboring with things or dealing with more intense themes of conflict or um, work or hardship since like late June. Um, it's a great Mars placement in order to get things done, but Mars has been retrograde, your ruling planet retrograde for a long period of time could have more, uh, you know, you, maybe you've not been feeling entirely like yourself. And if that's the case, um, watch for things to uh, turn around um, about mid month after that new moon and Mars turns direct. Now from the 15th to the 19th, you're going to get Venus going through squares to all of the planets in Capricorn, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn, overcoming them. Same themes I talked about um, previously. Uh, there's some, I would say, like a peaceful transition that you're looking for right now. Um, so think about that and think about maintaining the peace. Don't get involved. Avoid the soap opera. Avoid getting in, in the middle of things and um, avoid trying to play both sides of a situation to your advantage. Um, and but also, you know, be be willing. Don't be so principled about your needs or desires that you aren't willing to um, compromise with others. Those are very important themes this month for everyone. Now, um, November 27th, Venus will oppose Uranus across your first and seventh house axis. You're going to see that show up right around the 27th, but it kind of appears earlier in the month when Mercury also opposes Uranus between the 16th and the 17th. So second half of the month, you're dealing with the approach of these energies. What does that have to do with? It has to do with the need for some kind of personal renaissance um, and creative personal change. People often change their wardrobes or get haircuts that are really different, or um, they get out of relationships or they, they start, you know, acting more rebellious or defiant, but the need to create some kind of per personal catharsis uh, which we see from the new moon in, in your home sign. We see from Mars, your ruling planet turning direct in the middle of the month. That's uh, followed up by Venus opposite Uranus in Venus in your first house of identity and um, Venus representing what you want or desire, what's pleasing to you. And Uranus in the seventh house of relationships, the, the rebel, the, the defiant one. So there could also be questions about commitment that are coming up and what you want or need and what you're getting or not getting from others that you're close with. Finally, on the very end of, at the very end of the month, we're also seeing um, on the 30th, a lunar eclipse in Gemini in your eighth house. Now this is the house of other people's money, wealth, resources, debts, obligations. Remember this is called the gate of Hades and it's the, it's the house that leads us down into the underworld. And there are when we go into the underworld, we're, we're judged and evaluated, and we have to sort of pay the piper. And uh, that, that process was said to determine how our next life is set up as well. So this house is a house that often involves the anticipation of or the literal process of dealing with karmic debts. And um, with, a, with a lunar eclipse in this house, there's often a theme of a door closing or a window closing and kind of something coming to conclusion and resolution, that would mean that there are karmic debts that are going to get resolved um, this month or will start to resolve themselves. And that's going to be a theme for you going forward throughout 2021 as well. So watch for this eclipse to take a little bit to play out. All right. So more eclipses in that sign, in other words, to come. All right. We're going to wind it back and do it one more time for Pisces. Oh, let's go back to the beginning of the month. If you are a Pisces sun or a Pisces rising, we're going to put Pisces on the ascendant here. And uh, let's now talk about how these transits are going to affect you. Now, remember, the theme of the month is really Venus, Venus, Venus. Venus in her home sign. Uh, Mercury in Venus is signed to start the month. Um, Mercury is squaring Saturn at the beginning of the month, stationing, turning direct, squaring Saturn again. That's like the first seven or eight days of the month. Um, and Venus from the 15th to the 19th, we'll square Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. Uh, and then also Venus from right around the beginning of the month all the way up to about the 9th of the month, Venus will also oppose Mars. So you have three houses that are really active this month for you if you're a Pisces rising, the 8th, the 11th, and the 2nd. The 2nd and the 8th have a lot to do with our... Um, our assets, our skills, our resources, what we have, what we're in possession of, money and expenditures. Um, uh, so that's kind of your financial house. The eighth house has a lot to do with karmic debts and obligations to others, the karmic bills that we owe or that others may owe us somehow. 
I like it as a, as a very favorable month for Pisces to receive benefits from other people. But there also could be really core value conflicts that are happening this month between what other people have to offer or give and what you want or how your own needs or values are stand in contrast. For example, someone says, I want to give you a loan, but it comes with these particular uh, stipulations. And you're saying, well, I want the loan, but I don't want this particular stipulation. Um, that's just a simple way of saying that you stand to benefit this month from other people's, um, the good fortune that comes through other people, right? But it could also um, come into some kind of direct conflict with your own needs or desires or your own your own need for independence or to do things your own way. Or there could also just be, in general, there could be conflicts between your own money and resources and those of someone else. And then there's also this interesting way in which these topics of money, finances, debts and obligations to others are coming into contact with the house of groups and friends and colleagues and allies. Um, don't be surprised if there are some very powerful changes uh, at work in your life this month around the topic of friends and allies. You can see that Jupiter is conjoining Pluto uh, in this house this month by the 12th. Um, and this transit in particular will create catharsis, upheaval, um, potentially uh, it also, you know, sometimes ex corruption or things that are really problematic will be exposed and you'll have to sort of deal with them among groups or friends or colleagues or organizations um, and things like that. Um, there could also be questions about power and um, do I want to have, am, do I feel like I'm in control of a situation or do I feel beholden to someone or something else, whether it's within a group, an ally, a colleague, a friend, or also the, the money or um, resources of others. For example, um, this would, th th these kinds of transits, if you're a Pisces, I could see um, creating a situation where, you know, especially because Mars is turning direct in your second house, it's retrograde. Mars turns direct, by the way, on November 14th this month, where your, your desire to be independent, to do your own thing, to have your own gig or to <clears throat> um, work with your energy or resources or time or values in your own way at your own pace, you know, you're the captain of the ship. That's what Mars is pointing to. But Mars is having to deal with Venus who wants to offer something, but is it is it something that's going to entangle you in the needs or obligations or expectations of others? Um, and then this comes back also to big changes happening within groups or friends or organizations or something like that. So those are the themes. It's hard to put it all together, but at least if you have that outline, you can start thinking and anticipating of how these themes may fit into your own life right now. All right. So if we go forward to, uh, let's see, the 14th of the month, then we're going to have a uh, new moon in Scorpio. And that new moon is landing in your ninth house, the place of higher education, spirituality, religion, foreign countries. So there is a seed being planted around these topics that will be manifesting or blossoming over the course of the next lunar cycle, which takes us almost to the end of the year. So you're going to want to watch for those themes to become more important somehow. Teachers, teaching, education, the higher mind, foreign country or foreign travel, um, possibly um, Questions about beliefs or ideology could be important as well. And there may be a little bit of a theme of conflict around this that relates back to, you guessed it, money, resources, finances, etc. Because the ruling planet of this next new moon cycle, Mars, is stationing and turning direct in your career house. So watch for those themes to be connected as well. Um, then finally, if you go forward to, like, say, the 27th of the month, let's put Pisces back on the ascendant, you're going to see Venus in Scorpio opposing Uranus in Taurus. And earlier in the month between the 16th and the 17th, Mercury in Scorpio opposes Uranus as well. These houses getting a little, they're quick, quicker transits and they're not as uh, intense as the um, other transits that I laid out earlier between Libra, Capricorn and Aries in the 8th, 11th and 2nd houses. But this suggests to me that from mid-month forward, there's going to be questions, intellectual, ideological, um, mental changes happening. And some of it may involve um, 
you know, questions about what I believe is true, what are my values, the need to rebel or break free from ideas or thoughts that um, do not resonate. It kind of has the feeling of like a heretic or a, a rebel, an intellectual rebel, or the need to speak or say or do things that are provocative somehow. Um, or maybe that uh, questions about freedom of speech or belief are somehow important. And this would have the potential to impact relationships, um, especially, again, in terms of, um, you know, Venus and Mars's sign, right? So conflicts around belief or ideas or opinions, political, religious, uh, I would watch for those to be um, potential challenges, right? Uh, from say the 16th and 17th when Mercury opposes Uranus, all the way up to the 27th when Venus opposes Uranus. Now, finally, at the very end of the month, you're going to have a lunar eclipse in Gemini. And the lunar eclipse in Gemini will take place in your fourth house, which is the place of home and family. Now, a lunar eclipse usually brings endings or conclusion or closure. So watch for something to be reaching an end or a resolution, whether it's an emotional or psychological resolution or something more literal that's taking place that brings things to a close, kind of closes the door or closes the window or closes the door um, around home, family, property, land, parents, family, karma. And the, the karmic resolution that's happening here is not always easy with eclipses, um, but it's a process that you're going to be going through between now and the end of 2021 as you get more and more eclipses in Gemini in the fourth house. So there's a lot of transformation for you in the year ahead, both in the professional house. We're going to be revisiting that for you in December where you get an eclipse in your 10th house of career. And right now this month, though, there's that lunar eclipse, which often signifies um, conclusion or closure or the endings of things um, around home, family, roots, family karma, etc. So watch for that. All right, that's what I've got for you guys this month. If you are water signs, I'd love to hear your stories and hear how the month goes for you. Please feel free to uh, share insights and reflections that you gather along the way. I love hearing from you guys. Don't forget my new class, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic, begins on November 14th. I'd love to see some of you in class. Um, check it out on my website, nightlightastrology.com. Uh, there is an early bird rate. There's payment plan. There's uh, need-based tuition if you need help. So uh, yeah, be sure to check that out. Feel free to email with any questions, info at nightlightastrology.com. All right, take it easy, everyone. Bye.